Welcome to a Kaitor Industries tutorial. Today I'm going to take you through the AR7752 and AR7753 series radio for Chrysler and Jeep products in the early 1990s. Now these radios at the time featured both AM and FM tuning capability. But as time went on and technology evolved, it lacked cassette, it lacked CD audio, and of course, it doesn't have Bluetooth capability. So if you have a modern device such as a cellular telephone and you want to take your vast library of music, either stored locally or streamed from the cloud, and put it into this radio, there's no real easy way to do that. The first option is you can take this radio and you can actually just uh, throw it in the trash and buy an aftermarket head unit and replace it with that. But I suspect because you're watching this video, that's not really the option you're looking for and you're exploring some alternatives. Well, here's the first. You can buy one of these doodads. Uh, it's a FM transmitter. Uh, I got this one on Amazon. It was only about $12. So highly recommend this, especially if you're on a budget. This is a great solution. Uh, plugs into your cigarette lighter, broadcasts over the FM airways. Your radio antenna will pick it up tune that station and play your Bluetooth audio as if it were a radio station. It even has hands-free calling, although I'm not really sure how useful that is, and a couple of USB ports to charge your devices. So great solution here. However, it does have some flaws. The audio quality is not great. Uh, it can be pretty staticky, especially if you're in an area with a lot of radio stations and you get that overlap of the frequencies of the channels. Uh, it just may not sound that good depending on your vehicle and depending on the device you buy and depending on where you are in the country. The option that I've developed is the Blues Toothalyzer. Uh, this little board, what it does is once installed, you press a button on the face of the unit and it opens up the audio circuit from the tuner to the onboard amplifier and injects the Bluetooth audio from your phone or other device into the audio circuit. And then you press that same button again and it switches back to the factory audio. It's completely stealth, doesn't require any cutting or drilling of the exterior shell. We're going to install this inside the radio and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. It's not that hard. If you follow along and you have a little bit of patience and can-do attitude, you can do it too. You just need some basic tools, uh, very light soldering experience. In fact, if this is your first time soldering, I believe in you. I believe that you can do it. Uh, I have equipment, Amazon affiliate links in the description below. It'll show you the solder that I use and the tools that I use. You don't have to use those exact tools, but if I do recommend anything, get good quality solder. Do not go for cheap solder. Make sure you get leaded solder, the good stuff. Um, because it's gonna save you a lot of headache if you get the right stuff in the beginning. With that said, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna take you through the mod, so let's get to it. What we need to do is remove the top cover of the radio to gain access to the circuit board. Uh, and to do that, we remove this screw right here to start. So let's go ahead and zip that bad boy out. We can set that aside. And to remove this top cover, we just lift from the back, pull it up, pull it out. It's really that easy. Next up, we need to remove the faceplate. To do that, we need to remove some of the buttons off the front. So we need to remove this button, this button, and uh, the volume and the balance knobs here. So for these, we can really just pull these off. Um, if they're being stubborn, you can use a plastic pry tool like one of these and evenly alternate between the two sides so you're not putting too much force in one side uh, and then pull that off. Uh, not too violently because it is plastic, uh, but they should come right off. Okay, great work. So now with those out of the way, uh, we are able to remove this faceplate. To do that, we have a few plastic tabs on the sides, so right here and then the same on the other side. So we can just press that in. You can see it pops right out. 
and do the same thing on the other side. Sometimes these can be a little bit stubborn. Uh, don't go too crazy because we don't want to break it. It is plastic and it's old after all, but see, there we go. And that comes right out. At this point, we now have access to our front panel. Uh, so there are a few screws that we need to remove. First is this screw right here. Uh, and then we're going to take out this one, this one, and this guy over here. So four screws total on the face. So let's get those screws out. Now our next step is to install the Blues Toothalyzer in its permanent home right here on this tab. Uh, you'll notice this radio does have threads in this hole. Some of the radios will not. That's okay. The M3 screw that's provided in the kit, uh, if you just take a screwdriver and you run it through that hole up and down several times, as long as you are, you're square and vertical, um, it will cut the threads and that's okay. I would recommend doing that before the board is installed. So you put the screw in, drive it up and down several times, make sure you have good cut threads, and then you go ahead and install the board. Since this radio already has the threads, we're going to take our Blues Toothalyzer and we're going to put the screw into the hole in the bottom right corner, just like that. And we are going to drive that into this tab. Make sure that's good and square. Now, it doesn't need to be super tight. Uh, this is not structural. It's really just holding the board in place. Um, and there we go. The board is mounted. Our next step is to wire up the power to the Blues Toothalyzer. And to do that, we are going to connect these two pads right here. The ground pad is our ground, of course, and the 12 volt DC pad is our 12 volt. And we are going to get those on our radio right up here. These big pads, these are ground. You can choose either one, it's fine. And then down here, you see this accessory pin. That is where we are going to grab our 12 volt. And that circuit, that pin is powered anytime the accessory circuit is on in your vehicle. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Now a quick lesson on tinning these connectors. I've already stripped them here. Uh, so once you strip them, just give them a little twist. We're going to take our flux and we're just going to dip these in. Get those nice and juicy. We're going to take our soldering iron, a little bit of solder, get these hot, and apply some solder, just like that. There we go. Now you'll notice that the jacketing has melted back a little bit, leaving a little bit more wire exposed than we really want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our flush cuts. We're just going to trim that back a little bit. All you want is maybe two millimeters exposed. So not a lot. Perfect. And that's the technique that we're going to use going forward for all of the wires that we solder onto the radio board. So let's go ahead and solder this power circuit up to the Blues Toothalyzer.
unfortunately there's really no good way to get a camera angle in there but you can see now where our wires are landed so we have our ground landed right here and our 12 volt on the accessory pin right here there we go power wiring is completed our next step is to wire up the push button the push button we're going to use preset one on the front of the unit and that's going to get wired back to the blues toothalyzer and what that's going to do is that's going to tell us when to switch between the radio and the Bluetooth um, now that gets wired up to these first two pins the first pin is our ground and the second pin is the input um, now you'll notice here that this has what's called a JST plug it's uh, one of these and that just plugs right into this ribbon um, if yours doesn't have that, that's okay. Uh, this is totally optional. You can just solder this ribbon directly to the board and that's perfectly acceptable and that's very robust. The only advantage to this plug is it's a little bit easier to work with and if you ever need to take it apart, of course you can just unplug it. Uh, so we're going to be wiring the first two, which in our case, uh, white is going to be the ground and gray is going to be the input. To do that, we need to pull off this front faceplate. Uh, we've already taken out the screws, so what we need to do is just pop these two plastic tabs out of the way, over here on the right and over on the left. Just like that. And at that point, it will pull right out. Now be really careful, don't pull this hard because we have a ribbon down here. And if you damage that ribbon, there is a, a very low likelihood of fixing this radio. So be gentle. Uh, luckily, the pins that we are going to be working with are down in this bottom corner here. Now I went ahead and I unplugged the header pin from the volume control board uh, so that I could get a little bit easier access. The pins that we are interested in are right here and right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire our ground to this pin and our input to this pin. Now we need to isolate this button and to do that we actually need to cut some traces. So you can see this trace right here we're going to, going to need to cut that and we're going to need to cut this trace right here. Now be careful you don't want to cut this trace here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here and I'm going to cut right down here. So I'm going to get my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut that trace. Don't need to go all the way through the board guys, just, just, uh, just enough to cut that little copper trace. Now to test that this was successful, we get our multimeter out, we set it to continuity. Let's check it. There we go, it's working. And let's beep it out and make sure that this worked properly. There we go. Look at that. Cut tray successful. Perfect. Let's do the same thing down here and we can solder on our wires. Our next step is to run the wiring up to the front panel. Now if you're cutting your own ribbon, uh, you're going to need a six pin ribbon. If you got the ribbon with a kit, uh, I leave two of them about three inches longer and those two are going to go to that front panel. Uh, make sure you double check. Uh, our first two are going to the push button, so the first two wires, which in this case are the white and the gray. The colors may very well be different on your ribbon, so double check that before you run them through. And where we're going to be running those wires is right up here. You're going to see 
this hole right there, that's where we're going to be fishing our wires through. So let's go ahead, push our wires through and solder them to the push button. We can now go ahead and reattach our front panel to do that. Just make sure that these wires are going to clear this plastic clip. Go ahead and push that in. There we go. At this point, we're ready to start working on our audio circuit. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. There are four main pins we're interested in here. Uh, first up is this pin right here, which is radio left from the tuner. Uh, this is radio right from the tuner. If we follow these two traces down, you're going to see uh, where these go to a, uh, a pin header that goes out to the amplifier. Uh, it's marked on this white silk screen here on the back side. There's a header. Uh, so these two are going to be our audio injection points. So audio left and audio right. So that's where we're going to uh, either uh, bypass these traces and continue on with the radio audio or uh, cut that open and inject our Bluetooth audio. So what we're going to need to do to, in order to make this work is we need to cut these two traces right here and only these two traces. So let's get out our X-Acto knife uh, and uh, make sure that we're careful but cut both of these. Once again, we're going to grab our multimeter, set it to continuity mode, make sure it's working, and then check to make sure that we successfully cut those traces. There we go. And the other one. Perfect. No continuity. That means those traces are successfully cut. Uh, so what we can do next is we can apply some fresh solder to these four pins. Um, and we are going to wire our blues toothalyzer to these pins. Now, the way this is going to work, and you have to look carefully at the board, there is a, uh, a right channel in and a left channel in. So that's here. So this is right channel in and left channel in. And then there's a right channel out and left channel out. And those are going to go down here. So make sure you follow uh, what's printed on the board because your colors are most likely going to vary from the colors that I am soldering on here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that.
now we can go ahead and begin reassembly. Let's start with the volume control module. So let's spin that around and that just lowers and sits right in here on front, real easy. Then if you disconnected this pin, make sure that all of these pins are straight and aligned and then go ahead and push this down in. Make sure that's seated all the way. There we go, perfect. And we can go ahead and connect our Blue's tooth aligner for the first time. Now again, I have the JST header here, but if you don't have that, that's perfectly okay. You just simply solder each one of these wires to the vias on the board, real easy. We can now reattach the screws in our front panel. So let's grab that hardware and put those in. Great work. Let's put the faceplate back on, very easy. This just slides over and snaps right in, just like that. And we can take our buttons and put those back on. They just push right on, real simple. There we are. And finally, our top cover. And there we are, we're all set. Now let's go ahead and hook this up and test it and we are good to go. Thanks for watching.